All right. So. Uh, nice. Come in, come in. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for showing up. First of all, it's Friday. It's the last day, and it's, in, it's early, I guess. So uh, we have a pretty full room. I'm happy with that. Uh, let's see if I can get stuff on the screen. Right. So, yes. Uh, so last Wednesday, we uh, got started with, with all of this for a bit. So we installed Postgres and got a few queries to run. And uh, we figured out how to uh, create query types from raw byte strings. And we even took a look at the from row, from field, uh, to row and to field type classes in the, from, from this, uh, this, this module here. Um, let's see. One of the one of the things that um, yeah that that we did was try to get the the current revision uh, try to get the current revision. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> one of the things we did was uh, try to get the current revision in a Haskell t data type and try to get that into the database. I don't know how many people ended up having a working solution for that. Yeah, couple. All right. Um, I also published a solution for that. Uh, did anyone take a look at that? I don't see any hands, so let's try to do that first. Uh, so, um, so this is all the code from from this repository. I just posted a link again in the in the Discord channel for this uh, for this track, uh, and I updated the code. With some solute template, uh, with some solutions from the exercises from last Wednesday, and I also updated the exercises document to contain a whole bunch of things that you can or might want to do. Um, and yeah, we're gonna go through that today. So the exercises can be found like in in this exercises markdown file, and you've seen a bunch of those already, uh, and the code. Uh, also, some changes there. So let's walk. You, let's go and walk through what changed compared to uh, when we finished uh, last Wednesday. So uh, let's just ask Git because Git knows. Um, so we, uh, yeah, added a bunch of imports. This is including some of the solutions for, for the stuff that you've done. So uh, you can see importing from field to field to row, that kind of stuff. Um, importing some, some like system utilities, importing list. Um, and here I have this main function. Uh, we make a connection, you've seen that. And I, uh, here I just make a list of all migrations and all migrations is this, this basically list of migrations. Uh, because we don't read this from the, the config file yet. Um, and we then try to filter, it, filter this with this get migrations to run function. Um, we also fetch the active revision. And then uh, we, uh, for, for every migration in this list, uh, we run the migration using the connection, and we give it like this upgrade flag. Uh, and that's hard coded as well, right? So, um, and this 4M type is uh, basically, it, uh, you can actually, a 4M type, 4M function. Uh, that, that one is from control monad, and it has this kind of signature uh, where it needs a traversable and a monad, and, and, and a list is a traversable, right? Um, and it will run this monadic uh, function uh, action for every element in this traversable, and it will return a single value. So if you have like a list and you want to do an IO action for every element in that list, uh, you cannot use fmap. Uh, 
uh, because then this M wouldn't be here. Uh, and this M wouldn't also be here. You need 4M. So that's what's happening. Any questions about 4M? Feeling good? OK. That's, so it's a, it's a nice thing, I think. Use it quite a bunch. Um, yeah. Running a migration. Uh, you, you've seen this one. Running a migration takes the connection, the event type, a migration, and returns this uh, new event thing. Um, uh, the event is uh, a data type I introduced for uh, actually for the schema control events table that you may have seen if you haven't seen. I, I, put some, I put it in the SQL migration because I thought, hey, this might be useful for uh, if we want to do history and we want to do linting and we want to do validation and some sanity checks based on history. Don't know if we're going to get to that, but it's there if you want to take a look at how it works. The meat of this is basically uh, in a transaction, run the SQL from this migration file, insert this new event, but you cannot stop worrying about that, and mark the uh, new active revision after running all the SQL from that migration file. And a migration is this data type, and we have some uh, type class instances and some utilities to get like the, the file and disk for a given migration. We have a utility which uh, exits if files cannot be read, read. We have an event type. We have this new event thing that I mentioned. Um, and yes, insert new event, mark active revision, and get active rev. Uh, <laughs> this naming is not consistent, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, it's basically update the revision, set the rev column to whatever, uh, the, uh, to the revision of the migration. Um, and this kind of stuff works because uh, there is a, uh, be because which type class does, does this revision need to implement in order for, for this to work with PG execute? Any ideas? Yes, so be, uh, two yes, two row. Yeah. And why not two field? <coughs> okay, anyone else might have an idea? So the question is why does uh, the rev field of this migration, uh, blah, 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 blah. This, this rev thing, why does it need to implement, uh, well, it needs to implement both two row and two field, actually. But why does it need to implement, uh, um, why does it need to implement two row to like write this down? It's because of the type signature of pg.execute, because, uh, execute right here. Uh, it needs a two row. So like the types make you do this, but what's the reason that the types make you do this? It's because uh, this revision is one single value, but sometimes you want to update or insert values which, uh, data types which have multiple fields. So like uh, wanna, uh, insert a new user. The user has an email and the user also has a password hash. Uh, you need the two row type whenever you have, uh, uh, the two row type class whenever you uh, have multiple values. Uh, and that's why this function is a bit general and it makes you implement two row instead of two fields. So you can use execute pass in Haskell values, which are, uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, which can be consist of multiple things. All right, cool. Um, and we also do a select. And uh, oh yeah, the query function, interesting maybe. 
We use the query underscore function because we don't need to actually interpolate anything in this. Uh, so the normal query function also has this queue that you can pass it in. So if you want to do a uh, where some uh, get from you, uh, select star from users where user ID is question mark, then you need query without the underscore. If you don't do any of that, then you can use query with the underscore because it does not get this extra parameter. Uh, and then uh, the result of this is always a list because Postgres can um, give you a list of things always. Uh, well, not if you like limit one, but this database library does not have a clue about what's actually in the string, right? Um, so that's why the type is a, a list of things. And then we just take the, the head of this list and that's safe because of some SQL constraints that we have on this, on this database table and our bootstrap migration. Uh, and that's how that works. Are there any questions about these revision things and about the query things? No? All right. Um, then that's what has happened, sort of. Uh, I want to uh, open this one. This is the exercises file. Uh, let's see. So you've seen this, right? All the stuff about connect info and to row and from row instances. And we've talked about get active revision and mark active revision. Those type of things. Um, and we've talked a bit about the types there. Uh, and if you currently, uh, and so this header, minimally useful, <laughs> is what we're trying to uh, get some progress on today. Uh, I also created a whole bunch of other different exercises that give you like, uh, like a couple of weeks of work if you're interested in that <laughs> uh, with some ideas on how you could extend this and make it more useful and make it not just a toy. If, so if you want to do that and want to write that, that would be very nice. And then if you do so, then uh, email me in a couple of weeks and we'll compare implementations. Might be, might be cool. Um, but um, today we're going to see how far we can get into like this this section, and what we're trying to go, uh, trying to be doing is um, filtering the migrations, thinking a bit more about types, um, implementing a command line interface for this program, so you can actually specify whether the program should perform upgrades or downgrades. Currently, you can't, and uh, we're going to see if we can also do some parsing. Uh, so we're gonna gonna parse things with uh, this library, which is called Addo Parsec, um, and I'll talk you through how all that works. Uh, and like, if, if if we have time, we can we can do some stuff like here, do some JSON, get some other stuff going. So does this? Uh, how does this sound? Good, like reasonable. Maybe a bit ambitious. Ah, let's, have, let's have some fun. Um, ambitious is good. So uh, currently, there is uh, in this code directory uh, get migrations to run, right? So I just papered over this a bit. Currently, uh, this is not very useful because this does not actually filter the stuff that needs to run. Uh, because like you have a da the, the problem we're solving is this, right? We have a database and the database has a schema and we've ha we have this revision table and uh, if we're just gonna, again, run all the migrations whenever we run an upgrade command and then when we do it again, run all the migrations again, uh, that might not make sense. So we don't wanna do that and we need this bit of extra information which we have in the database um, 
which is called the current revision of the schema, which tells us, hey, uh, I have this whole list of migrations, but I don't want to run all of them. I want to run like uh, uh, this part because we're here and the user added these other migration files and I want to now run these other migration files. Uh, but I don't want to run the ones that I have already run because it's SQL and it can do like arbitrary weird stuff and uh, uh, change uh, things. It does not only need to do like table definitions and if exists and that kind of stuff, it can also mutate data. And sometimes you want a migration which does something like that, but you only want it to run once. So that's important and that's why we're implementing like this, this function. So I have this revision parameter uh, and uh, yeah, uh, rev is rev and rev. Uh, this is basically what this revision thing is. We have a list of these migrations and we want a new list of these migrations which are sort of filtered. Um, so that's, uh, that's, that's exercise number one. Um, so I'd say, uh, like, clone the repo if you haven't, or, or uh, fetch new stuff from the repo if you haven't already, and then uh, try to see if you can get this one going. And if you need any, any help, I'm here. Uh, we'll do the solution, or a solution for this in a bit. Uh, and um, you might already have some questions about, oh, uh, you might already have some questions about the types here uh, and think of a few edge cases. Uh, if you do so, that's fine. Those are the next couple of exercises, but uh, get a basic version going is the, uh, is the idea. See if you can. Should it run the test? Um, it's probably a good idea if you want, yeah. Uh, but I'm not doing, uh, yeah, if you, if you want to add a test, there's this uh, test slash spec thing. I did not implement any test suit things, but if you want to do this, uh, then you can. Uh, it's a pure function, right? So you, you, that's pretty good about it. So you can uh, add some fixtures and do uh, all the H spec, spec with things. Um, if you don't want to do this and just want to find out by running the program, that's also fine with me. Because I don't want to make you also learn HBEC. I think I'm showing you enough libraries for if, if, if you're new to them.
So in order to use expect, uh, we would need to add additive dependencies to type GR, right? Mm-hmm. That's true. Um, but, uh, oh, let me take a look if it's not already there. Uh, you probably want to add it as a test-only dependency, not as a dependency of the entire thing. So, um, oh, when it, whoops, wait a second. Uh, get the mirror going again. There is... So, um, right here, you have this library part, you have this executable part, and these have dependencies, but you can probably get away with doing uh, uh, this.
ask a question? Yes, of course. Um, do you have any, any um, like what, what sort of operations should the CLI support? Um, I'd say the CLI should support up and down, something like that. Uh, so up all the way and down? Down all the way and maybe, okay. yeah, uh, that's like the simplest version. And a few, uh, yeah, so then if you want to have in steps, uh, yeah, then you, you, you could also default the downgrade to like, only go one revision down. That's probably probably better. Um, yeah, some other things you could do is add the CLI and make it configurable. So you can say up all, up one, up two, down one, down all. But down all is a bit um, is a bit more tricky because. Um, we said, OK, sometime, one of the things we said was some migrations don't have a down migration because sometimes you, your migration destroys data. Um, so you need to think a bit about that. Yeah, I guess you can go down only if there's, yeah. uh, if there's a down no, uh, file for that same migration. That's true. But then your get migrations to run function becomes, uh, needs some I.O. or you need to change the migration type. Uh, because currently, with how it works, it that is not supported. Uh, but adding support for that would, and changing the migration type to do that would be very worthwhile. If because this function is going to get pretty complex, uh, keeping it pure is nice. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's uh, something you could do. Cool. Thanks. Cheers. Any other questions, by the way, or people needing help? Yes. Uh, migrations have an order. Okay. So um, you, you get this list of migrations, yeah. and you say, I have this one, 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 I have this one. Uh, and the notion is uh, you want these to run in order because they can depend on each other and on the previous values. Because like if you have a create table and then here in this migration, and you have an alter table in this migration, then um, which references this table, right? Then uh, you cannot just. Okay, so we want to first run them in order and also depending on the active revision. So there are like two things yeah. we need to consider. Yeah, yeah so you consider the, you, you have a list, right? So you it's basically find the, the point in the list mm -hmm. where migration exists, which uh, has the, which is, has a revision. Uh, which is the active revision, and then return from that point on yes, everything yes, forward. Exactly. Uh, it usually, it means uh, everything up to and including the active one has succeeded. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah so in, indeed, because the migrations all run in a transaction, and if you have an error in site SQL, while you're in a transaction, you don't see the results of that transaction. Okay. So if something is in in the rev table, then you can assume that it has been successful. Um, yeah.
<clears throat> so, how are people doing with this implementation? Is it going all right? Needs, need a bit more time? OK. Then you get a bit more time. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yes. Uh, can I be sure that each uh, migration has unique revision to it, right? Or uh, should I think about this or? So you mean? Uh, yeah, should you worry about this, right? <laughs> uh, but in this case, maybe. <laughs> That's what I wanted well, to do was like sort the whole so the migrations? Yes. So you stay while to pick only those revisions that oh, yeah. I want to. Yeah, right. Uh, that's a pretty good point. Um, you can assume the list you get is uh, already in the order that people want to run this in. Um, because 
Yeah, the revisions, they have like a, a revision like 001, 002, that kind of stuff, but it could be arbitrary. So, yeah. Um, the, the, that's a bit like, because uh, the, des the goal of the design is people will eventually give you a list of stuff to run in a specific order. So you need to adhere to that order. That's a bit of the domain. So you don't need to sort. All right, um, are you a bit ready for this? Maybe slightly? Okay, um, let's, uh, let's, let's try it, right? Uh, blah, 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 blah. I actually didn't implement tests for this while I was writing it, I maybe should have. So that was a very good question. I added a bit of test stuff for this. So like, I said uh, you have this tests field in your package.yaml and it specifies the dependencies that you need in order to run your tests. If you then add hspec, which is this uh, testing tool for Haskell in there, then you can, uh, can add it, uh, can run tests. And then there's this, uh, oh yeah, I should probably also show this. Then there is this stack test, test command uh, which uh, runs the tests. And this is very useful stack stack test file watch uh, means that every time you uh, change a file it will recompile rerun your tests it's pretty cool so then you can have like a pretty quick feedback loop on on what you're doing so take a, let's take a look at oh and the tests are in tests slash spec dot hs uh, and if you're like you're also seeing this right yeah um, hspec.github.io contains a bit of a brief user manual if you care about it. Uh, it's basically import tests.hspec and import the CLI. 
Oh, yeah, and I um, previously this was there. So the CLI module only exported the main symbol. Uh, that's not very useful if you're doing tests because then you want to also test other things than main. Uh, so I just removed it. Um, and after you do that, uh, the tests also contain a main, so you need to hide main from the CLI. And then you can have like uh, the same kind of data type here. So you get a list of these migration types, right? So um, we had this uh, get migrations to run uh, uh, thing. Uh, should be, and let's add some tests. Uh, so this needs all migrations. This needs uh, a rev. And let's uh, pass in this one. Uh, so if we have this list of migrations and we uh, run the current, uh, we get a list of those to run with the, where the current rev is 1, or 0, 0, 1, the byte string, then the length of this uh, should be 1, right? Because uh, the current rev is 1, so we don't want to run this one. We want to run number 2. Yeah? Uh, oh, and then you need, like, probably this. And then there's a failure. Uh, sorry? Yes, that's a very good. I, I believe I know which button it is. Like this? Too dark? Uh, um, is this <coughs> right? Okay, it sort of works. Um, so then you can say whenever I call get migrations to run on my all migrations list. This uh, should have the length one, and that's like reasonable, right? And it's failing because I didn't write the implementation yet. Uh, do it another time, and whenever we do two, it should be uh, zero. Also pretty nice. So then now the thing will complain. It, it will uh, uh, it will just exit on the first test, I guess. Uh, and then right here in get migrations to run, uh, we need to do some smartness, right? Um, so we have this active rev and a list of migrations, uh, which also have this rev field. Uh, and then the question is, uh, rev, find the definition. Rev has this EQ instance, which means we can, can compare on it. Uh, it's derived automatically. We didn't need to write it ourselves, which is pretty cool. So we can do equality on revs. Uh, this is how that works in Haskell. Uh, so going back to get migrations to run, um, we probably want to do something with this, uh, this, this all migrations uh, thing. So we want to we know something on the order of uh, I want all the um, all the things which have um, already happened. So I uh, called this uh, something uh, uh, like in the uh, no have not been run yet. Cool. So then there's this uh, all migrations thing, and there's also from data.list a very useful function, drop while. So you can do recursion yourself, or you can use something like uh, like this. So drop while, uh, probably list dot drop while. Does this still compile? Uh, no, obviously not. <laughs> uh, oh, it's in prelude. Sorry. 
so this takes a predicate for a migration because this one is this function here is evaluated for all the migrations in this list and then we want to know whether the active rev is not equal to the rev of the migration and we run that over all migrations uh, and there's still test failure which is interesting uh, well not actually because uh, that needs to be there but there's still a test failure um, expected one but got two uh, that's because drop while returns the suffix remaining after take while blah blah okay this docs these docs aren't great but it means that whenever this predicate is true like for in this example when it when it's less than free whenever it's true so for this free it's uh, um, uh, whenever it's false sorry uh, this free is the first element for which this is false, but free is also included right here. So we need to, we, we get one extra element in this have not been run list, basically. So uh, drop it. This should work, hopefully. Please, yes. Uh, and this is uh, a typo. Uh, there's also this other test, uh, which you can try, uh, or which is actually a bit difficult um, because that's the next exercise. It's like what should be, or th this might be, this might be more useful. Uh, like whenever there is to get the point across, um, what should happen in this case, right? It should be zero, and that's probably going to be true. But it's zero for like a, a bit of the weird, it, it should be zero, that's nice. But there's also this version where, uh, no, never mind. Uh, this, this should be zero, but this uh, thing should have it should maybe be an error because you want to filter a list of migrations and the active revision does not even occur in, in this list. So how are you going to filter it? You're running the git repo from a, with all the migrations with a ancient version and we're way ahead of revision two. We have our next feature of our amazing product. It's revision number three and we're going to make real money with it. Uh, but the tool should probably warn you about that. So there is something that can be done about types, and that's the next exercise, I think. And there's a break. Um, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them over the break.